So we can measure pore pressure in the reservoir directly. Um, the most accurate way would be, you know, actually to diagnostically stop and you know, uh, to, to use water line to actually go down there and measure to isolate the formation pressure from the annular pressure. Um, but we can also have a pretty good estimate via the mud weight, right? You guys have all taken drilling, so I think you kind of have an idea of how to do this. It just uh, typically, uh, in managed pressure drilling, you want to drill balanced, right? You want the mud weight and the pore pressure in the reservoir to be equal to one another so that uh, you're, you're either not losing mud to the formation, which could cause the formation of the hydraulic fracture, and then you have lost circulation problems. Or the other way, uh, you don't want to take on a lot of um, reservoir fluids into the into the mud column, the fluid column in the drill string, because uh, it can be dangerous, right? You can drill faster that way, and some people do drill un under balance, but uh, you can have problems due to gas rises and other things, which cause a Macondo accident. Right? So. Those are ways we can, you know, actually measure the pore pressure. We, we can also estimate it. And so it takes a few steps to get a good estimation. But one thing we can do is you can start with a confined compaction experiment, right? And so in this experiment, what you'll do is you'll, you'll have a sample. You can think of that as a, just your core. You're going to confine it, so you basically surround the core with like a steel sleeve. Right? <clears throat> and then compress the core, apply stress to it. Okay. And then so what you see here, this is a plot of porosity versus uh, effective stress, right? So remember, effective stress is, in this case where you just have one stress, it's SV minus the pore pressure, right? So in this, in this case, this plot, uh, or the lines on this plot, I mean, the dots on this plot are actual measurements from one of these tests. So you're, you're measuring the porosity as a function of the vertical stress. I guess in this case, uh, let's call this SV, and then there's some, you do these experiments with fluid in them, so you can control the pore pressure. <coughs> and so the dots are actual experiments uh, conducted in a laboratory, and the line, uh, the line was fit with something called Athe's relation. Right. So uh, Athe's relation is this. It's just a shell compaction relation. So you have some uh, phi zero is just the initial porosity. This term is your effective stress the vertical stress minus the pore pressure, and then you have a fitting parameter, beta. So beta is a fitting parameter. So that, that equation uh, is the equation to this, this line. So beta has been chosen so that it the best fit to the data. And in this case, it's a pretty good fit. However, you have to use this with caution, right? Because that equation is going to sort of only work if the porosity monotonically decreases with depth. So 
which is sort of what you intuitive was intuitively what you'd think, right? If I if I continue to you know if I have a block in my hand and I'm really strong, and I squeeze it, right? It has pores in it. And I'm going to continue to squeeze the pores out of it, right? like a sponge. And you know, as long as the pores don't have anything in them, as long as it's a sponge, that will always work. Right? As long as I continue to squeeze it until they're all gone, right? until there's no porosity. I can continue to squeeze it until there's no porosity. But in reality, the, the pores that in, the, in the earth have fluid in them. And if you have an overpressure scenario, right? if you have an overpressure scenario, that overpressure can actually cause the porosity to, be, to increase at depth, at large depth. So this would be, your, you know, the pressure versus depth. So again, this is lithostatic, hydrostatic, overpressure scenario. And then this is porosity versus depth. So monotonically de decreasing until you hit the overpressure region. And then you actually have an increase in porosity in that, in that location. So you have to use, you know, um, you have to use that equation with caution. Do what? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can all you can. Um, You know, again, which the, the goal is to estimate pore pressure, right? So this equation here is the solution to Athey's equation. You're solving Athey's relation for the pore pressure. Right? So this is the solution, right? So this thing we can easily estimate, right? So you know, one psi per foot. Beta, we went in the laboratory, we did our compaction experiment, we have beta, we know what the initial porosity is, right? So now we just need to know what the actual porosity is. And we can get the actual porosity from our P wave. And so we go to our, uh, you know, we do our sort of the steps here, and I, I plot these three plots on on one figure here in the book, they're actually separated by 10 pages. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, so you go to the lab, and you, you, you go to the lab, and you, and you get, do your compaction experiments. You find what beta is. Then you go out, you do your P wave exp stuff. And then you have like this uh, delta T matrix. Delta T matrix is your matrix transit time. Uh, and F is the acoustic formation factor. So you get those from your P waves, uh, and that's what this plot is showing. And then from that, you can estimate your pore pressure. Right? So you, you know your, from the P waves, you, you know your porosity. You can plug it into there, and then everything on this side of the equation is known, right? And of course, then the porosity would be a function of depth from this. And then you can cr recreate this plot. And so this is actually what was done, in which case uh, these lines here, so here's your, again, lithostatic, hydrostatic. These lines came from predictions from those equations in P waves and for two sets of data, and you can see they fit the data pretty well, right? So the, there's a white, the white dots are one set of data, and the black dots are another set of data. <laughs> I think it would be using units of time. Yeah. It has to be, right? For the equation to work. Because yeah. this. Porosity is unitless, right? 